This week, Alex is helping an authentic Indian restaurant in West London, which is struggling to find a head chef. They're looking to expand three establishments over the next three years, and to do that, they need to find a head chef for the original location. So far, to find the right head chef has been a nightmare. Service! Four years ago, friends Jay and Uttam had a dream to bring authentic Indian cuisine to the great British public. Today we are doing samosas. Mmm. Oh la la. They opened Potley and never looked back. Jay and Mazel, we arrived around 13 years back to UK and we worked for different restaurants and we were shocked to see the quality of Indian food. It lacked the originality, the, the spicing. So what we serve is uh, Indian food as it is served in India. The dream that we have uh, got is to bring the best of Indian market food to UK. Dishes from every nook and corner of India for people to know what the real Indian food is all about. But without the right chef, they have no hope of growing the business. For me to get out of the kitchen, and we want the right uh, head chef to come in, join our team and make it happen. Currently, Jay heads up the kitchen six nights a week. And Uttam works front of house. We would do whatever required to get the best possible individual. I really hope Alex is able to find me a right head chef who is able to join this exciting project and be part of it. Yeah, so fingers crossed. After advertising the post of head chef, nine applicants have been selected. Hello, good morning. And we'll all undergo a day-long interview. Yesterday, the first three went head to head, but there was a major upset. Hurry up, hurry up. Saurabh had the experience. I think it's a piece of art on a plate. But was too fine dining. My fear about his ambition to become a fine dining chef is only getting bigger. While Sky had the passion. He has dared to create something very authentic. There were concerns. Rice is your basic staple yeah. and you've got to get it right. Sandeep had the talent. I can happily pay to eat this dish any day. But his commitment was a worry. Hello, Sandeep. You've, you've gone backwards and forwards an awful lot. So for the first time, no one made the grade. Can I see one of those chefs working in my kitchen? That's a big question. And the decision is, no one goes through the next round. It's day two, and three more chefs are about to be cross-examined. Only the most suitable will be put through to the final interview at the end of the week. Why do you think it has been difficult to find the right head chef? The Indian food here, which is perceived as Indian, is, is anglicised. So we don't have that sort of skill level that's, uh, which we aspire. So there is a huge disparity between what we want and the talent pool that is there in the market. What we really are looking for from a head chef is someone who's going to be thinking the way we think. We want a person who's going to be saying, yes, this is your style. I'll follow it and I'll take you to the next level. Should we talk about today's three yes. candidates? Excited. With a full day ahead of them, it's an early call for our three chefs. Um, we have Kuldeep Singh from Bromley, who's currently the head chef at India Essence. Mm -hmm. Kuldeep has travelled the world cooking high-end Indian cuisine and is currently head chef under renowned restaurateur Atul Kocha. Well, I'm looking for new challenge, new things to do. This could be his break to make a name for himself. I know my food and I know my cuisine. I just do my best. That's my goal. He's got a very, very thorough CV. I'm hoping that he's not overqualified, in a way. I would be very curious to find out what is going on in Kuldeep's mind and why he does he needs to move at this point in time. OK. We have Stuart Parker from Brighton, who is a very different kettle of fish. Executive chef Stuart has extensive managerial experience. He has never worked in an Indian restaurant, but has a passion for this cuisine. I'm really determined to get this job, just to prove people wrong. You know, a six foot two Scotsman can be a head chef at an Indian restaurant. Hi, I'm It's Kuldeep, Kuldeep He currently oversees a group of gastro pubs in Brighton and has the expertise to grow a business successfully. 
He's doing a lot of the developmental stuff that you might find interesting. I look after three pubs just outside Brighton. Oh, OK, 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 that's good. But I haven't seen a single place that he has worked, he has got any Indian experience. But it, it, it will boil down to the individual person, how passionate he is to learn a new cuisine in his life. So you're going to cook Indian food or you're going to cook your no, own? I'm going to have a bash at Indian food. OK. Our third candidate is Arbinda Singh Dugal from London. Arbinda developed a passion for Indian cuisine in Mumbai, but since moving to London has been working in high-end French cuisine. It really attracts me that this can be the opportunity from where I can uh, head a team and uh, incorporate a uh, little bit of fine dining in Indian food. This job could be his chance to get back to his culinary roots. He is currently working as a junior sous chef, which is his highest position so far. Mm -hmm. So it would be a big jump up to head chef. I'll be interested to hear from him why he thinks he's ready. So working in a French restaurant? Yeah, I'm working in Coglino's here. It's been five years I'm working in uh, It's a busy restaurant. Yes, yeah. okay. very busy restaurant. Yeah, yeah. The one saving grace is his training and his uh, sort of baptism by fire, his uh, initial grounding of Indian cuisine has been in India. So he understands Indian cuisine, I think. All set for today. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see. And the proof is in their cooking, so we want to watch and see how they perform. Good, let's go. The candidates will be scrutinized on their knowledge of spices, undergo a face-to-face -face interview, and prepare a pre-planned signature dish. I forgot to bring my recipe with me, so I can't remember what I'm doing exactly. <laughs> I'm like, no, I've been racking my brains all morning. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Hello. Jay and Utam. Hi, good morning. This is a real interview process. We will have a chance to talk to you, but before we get into details, we think it's fair to see, first of all, what your cooking skills are like. The challenge for the chefs is the classic Mughlai Korma. We have got a very nice cut of hind leg of lamb and we have got about eight nuts uh, that we have uh, selected. I use three of these nuts for my Mughlai Korma. So it, it depends upon you. What is your interpretation of authentic Mughlai Korma and, and which nut would you use in the cooking process? All the chefs. Happy cooking. Thank All you. the best. The chefs have just one hour to prepare a traditional lamb Mughlai Korma with a rice salad. My initial impressions are uh, I've got a bit of a challenge on my hands. I've got two very experienced fellas down there. It's going to be interesting. To make the sauce, the chefs will need to identify the right combination of nuts. I'm just going to go what's in there, go with gut feeling, and then uh, see how we get on. The Mughlai Korma is very exciting. It's, uh, it's a very nice dish. I'm going to use uh, cashew nuts. Then there is uh, something similar to the sunflower seed. And there is almond powder over there. But every region have a different kind of korma in India. So everyone is going to make it differently. Which nuts the chefs use will give Jay an insight into how much they know about this customary cuisine. The nuts uh, that I would probably expect the chefs to pick up is the charmagas, yeah. which is the mixture of four melon seeds. Yeah. Um, we've got almonds. It gives you that moorishness in terms of the sauce. And we've got cashew nuts. These three nuts I use in my korma is because A, it is uh, neutral in terms of flavour. B, it gives you that sort of mouthfeel and the moorishness in terms of the sauce. Yeah. And C, it gives a proper consistency that we are looking for in a korma. Would you call using coconut a classic English mistake? It, it is an anglicised version of uh, Indian korma. Contrary to the popular belief, Alex, uh, that korma should be mild, sweet and with coconut is absolutely wrong. In India, korma means to braise and there are a lot of regional interpretations. In Kashmir, you would have korma, which is really spicy. Yeah. And the one that we are cooking today is the Mughlai version, which is really rich and uh, Moorish and, you know, has that sort of opulence and decadence about, uh, about it. And you would always use red meat for it. And if you go down to the south, there is an option of having coconut. And that is a derivative of korma, which is called kurma. 
So yes, within korma there are a lot of interpretations, but one that the chefs are making today is the Mughlai korma using these three nuts. With the prep well underway, Alex and Jay check on the chef's progress. The chefs have no idea before they arrive what dish is going to be that they're asked to prepare. So unless they have a working knowledge of that dish, it's pretty hard. And also, Jay is pretty specific about what he's looking for, so it's quite easy to fall foul of that. So far, the experienced Kuldeep has got off to a textbook start. I browned down my onions and I put the lamb inside, so it's going to sear with oil and onion because uh, it's enhanced the flavor with the lamb, onion, and all the spices. So it's giving a nice texture. When my mom used to cook, and I just watching, I start like thinking about food, I start thinking about spicy, and how they taste, and how the texture come up. What three nuts did you choose to use? Uh, I'm using cashew nuts, nuggets, and uh, uh, almond. So, uh, char magas, the melon yes. seeds? Yes. Oh, okay, brilliant. That's good. Why don't you use coconut? Well, coconut, like, uh, in this country, people use coconut, but back in India, we never use coconut oh, okay. in, uh, in any korma. So this is a dish you're pretty confident about? Yes, I am. Any comments so far on Kuldeep, first of all? Kuldeep knows exactly what he's doing, which is great to see. One thing with Kuldeep is I saw he's adding tomatoes in korma because uh, tomatoes and co in korma are, is definitely not authentic. So if it is, he's putting a twist or a spin uh, that we will only see when uh, his dish comes out. Stewart's got off to a confident start. Well, I've got uh, basic spices and some onions and some garlic, uh, and I've put my uh, my nuts that I want to grind into them. That's as far as I've got so far. <laughs> He's also picked the right trio of nuts. My cuckoo style is very rustic, very accessible. It's, I express myself in the kitchen and I put, I put a lot of love into the dish and then when you get that love back, it's, you know, that's what drives you on to the next day. But unlike Kuldeep, Stuart has chosen to roast his lamb. I see you are sort of roasting away some of your lamb. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So That's I've, I've, I've cut it down, I've taken away a lot of the sinew, so it's a lot more pleasant to eat. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to roast that off. Mm -hmm. and it's going to go into the pan, just so I can get rid of all the oil. Right, so won't you lose any of your cooking liquor also at the same time? <clears throat> I don't think so, no, because I, I put a tray in before everybody else, so it's okay. nice and hot, so yeah. it should seal it and make, make sure the juices stay inside. That's clever. So. That's clever. It's really important to get it right, because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose. I want to get as much as I can from this. I want to, I want to win it. Stuart, I think uh, he is uh, putting his own interpretation to the korma. Uh, he's roasting the lamb first in the oven, and then also he has made a paste out of the nuts by roasting the nuts. In korma, we do not roast nice. the nuts because it just what it does is that a it discolors the sauce, and b again the nutty flavor accentuates a bit too much. So I think I would be intrigued to see how his dish turns out because I personally have never cooked korma along that, those lines. For the last few years, Arbinder has been classically trained in French cuisine. However, his Indian roots have not been forgotten. What really interests me and keeps on driving me in the cooking is it's only come from the heart. Either you like it or you don't like it. It's a learning process and it's a never ending process. Are you used to making korma dishes? Ah, uh, yeah. I used to do it in India when I used to work in an Indian uh, restaurant. But over here, I've changed my cuisine. But I really wanted to take an Indian cuisine to a different level. I see you blanched your um, lamb. Yeah. Why do you do that? I'm just going to get some uh, the little bit of impurities out of it. Mm -hmm. And I've cut it, the lamb in a very small piece, so it's going to cook quickly, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to tasting <laughs> it. Thank you very right. much. Arbinda, what do we think of his technique. Arbinda looks quite conf confident. He's literally not braised the lamb as I would have loved, but he has pop, sort of blanched the lamb a bit more. So who knows, I mean, uh, yeah, he can pull it off. Alex, Jay and Uttam are also looking to see how the chefs cook and serve their rice. Getting this right 
is imperative. I mean, I know an Italian way of cooking rice. I do it all mm -hmm. the time, but mm -hmm. I don't know an Indian way of cooking rice. Rice is incredibly complex to cook. Um, to get the ratio between your rice and the water is very critical. Badly cooked rice could ruin Jay and Uttam's reputation. A man who knows the importance of perfect rice is Vivek Singh, one of the UK's most respected modern Indian chefs. With three renowned restaurants to his name, he can't afford his chefs to mess up on this vital part of Indian fare. The ability to cook rice right is an absolute given. It's so easy to cook, yet so easy to get it wrong. When you get it right, it's a thing of joy. For a Mughlai Korma, Vivek recommends aged basmati rice to create a classic pilau. Basically, rice cooks by absorbing water. You could either cook it like pasta and drain off the excess water, in which case you lose all the nutrients, or you could measure the water, cook it absorption methods. All the water gets absorbed, but the rice just gets the exact quantity of water that it needs. A mix of spices are fried together before adding water and a handful of mint. And the rice is going to go into it. It's been washed in two or three changes of water and soaked for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm cooking a kilo of rice, I took two liters of water. So I see, I see that most of the water has been absorbed. Give it four or five minutes with the lid on, but switch it off. And so it'll just carry on cooking in its own, own heat. A final shake to separate the grains, and the rice is complete. It's got all the flavors of all the spices we put in. Each of the grains should still be shiny and separate and light and fluffy. Like Vivek, it's imperative that Jay and Uttam have a head chef that can cook faultless rice. They will be paying close attention to how Kuldeep, Stuart and Arbinda prepare this essential ingredient. Are you just cooking a plain rice? Just a, a scented rice. Scented as, rice? As far as a, you know, this is my experience of you know, using the spices that are going to work well with the korma. I've got some water boiling here, I've got some flavours in here, so I'm going to take all the big pieces of spice out and then use the water for cooking the rice. And the spices are take before the, I Take the spices out before I put the rice in, so you don't want that lump of spice yeah. when you're eating the rice. Interesting. Yeah. All the best. Thank you very much. Kuldi keeps his side dish simple. Which rice are you cooking with your korma today? Well, I'm cooking simple pilau rice with saffron flavor. Just a plain pilau rice? Just plain rice with saffron. Very good. Saffron pilau rice, actually. Brilliant. While Arbinda cooks his rice in his lamb stock. Are you cooking uh, rice with your Mughlai korma then? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, cooking uh, a saffron and a mint uh, pilau, which I've already boiled the lamb in. Right. So I'm going to use that stock in making the rice. Oh, to make the rice? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm just using the pressure cooker because it makes the process of cooking lamb very soft, very quick. All the flavors and everything is there in the pressure cooker, so there's nothing is coming out there. I'm happy. Tastes good. Time's almost up. Oh, you're bubbling. How much longer? Just two minutes. Two minutes. OK. Chef? Yeah. Ready? Two minutes? Yeah, it's fine. Two minutes? Yeah. OK. And Stuart's the only chef ready to serve. Ready, boss? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to plate the front. OK. Yeah. One more minute, yeah. Yep. Just a little bit. How much longer? Just one more minute. One more minute, OK. Still got another minute, chef. Not ready over here. Uh, well, that hour disappeared very, very quickly, uh, but you know, I, I plated up on time. That can be said for the other two, so <clears throat> hopefully my rice isn't too overcooked and uh, my curry's not cold. So, a little bit frustrating at the end, you know, but oh well. Thank you. you. Chefs, thank you for the lovely dishes that you've got in front of us and it was very pleasing to see all of you getting the nuts right. Kuldeep's first. Kuldeep's first. Kuldeep serves his lamb Mughlai korma with a side dish of saffron pilau.
Chef Kuldeep, your uh, lamb is a bit underdone. It has got a resistance to bite. It's not sort of a melt in the mouth. Okay. In terms of the sauce, I don't know whether you have added anything else with the nuts, whether it might be tomatoes or you have roasted your nuts, I'm not sure. But the sauce color looks a bit too dark. And what do you think of the rice? In terms of the visual aspect of the rice is stunning, it's really good. That's what I would have expected out of you. Okay. I would have had expected the rice to be slightly fluffier, slightly fluffier okay. than what you got here. Okay. But Thank very you. close. Thank you. Thanks. Accompanying Stuart's lamb Mughlai korma is his own fragrant rice, which he's flavoured with spices from his korma. Shall we? Yep. This is one of the mother sauce. It has to be perfect. So whether you have roasted the nuts, it's too granular. Uh, the color is uh, very dark, uh, probably because you have roasted the lamb and that came into the sauce. The cooking liquor probably has spoiled your sort of the richness, the sheen that I was looking for, for from the korma. I think the rice, you have done a very good job. However, a pinch of extra salt could have really done it, um, you know, wonderfully well. I take your comments on board. Yes, Absolutely, 100%. Mm -hmm. So, fair enough. Lastly, our binder. Yeah. Arbinder serves his lamb Mughlai korma with a traditional yakni pilau, which is a classic North Indian dish. It gets its name from the meat stock that it's cooked in. The lamb was very tender. Yes, that was really clever thinking is that you got the lamb the dice is a bit smaller, so the time it takes to cook is less and mm. hence uh, you got, within the short space of time that you had, you delivered a lamb which is nice and very tender. I think it looks very pretty. Yeah. This was the dish that I have to say that I was excited about trying because it's, it was appealing. The sauce, the colour is there, the sheen is there, it's not gloopy, it uh, doesn't have any granular part particulates uh, of the nuts in there. That's what we expect from a korma. What about his rice? I think rice uh, is good, but it's sticky. It's okay. slightly underdone. Okay. I can, I can bite the rice, right. which shouldn't be the case. Yeah. Thank you very much, chefs. Do please feel free to try each other's, and we'll see you in a minute. Yeah, no worries. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All three chefs have now completed the first stage of their job interview. I think if they give us a recipe to, you know, cook the same dish, so everyone is going to come out differently. So no, oh, very different. Yeah. We'll take on board all the criticism. We'll try not to repeat the same mistakes in the next round. It's quite spicy. Yeah. I thought that Kuldi would nail the perfect korma, to tell you the truth. Quite disappointing. Very you know, disappointing. Very, very disappointing. And yeah. his lamb was not cooked well enough. Have you put spice in there? Yeah. <laughs> Added to chili. Mm -hmm. Little bit. The spice is high. Yeah. Stuart, I think we're not surprised particularly, are we? Yes. As we saw him cooking it, we already had grave doubts about how it was going to come out. Stuart did a great mistake trying to roast the lamb in the oven. Yes. What it did, it just dried up. And even if you put in a sauce like korma, it really didn't, did not take in the flavor. It is quite grainy, isn't it? I'll come back, same, same attitude as I had this morning, you know, feet first, calm. Keep going, thinking about what I'm doing. The prime ingredient, which is the lamb, needs to be cooked, needs to be tender. And the only one who achieved that was our binder. Lamb's yeah. very good in your one. Pressure cooker worked eventually. <laughs> our binder's rice was good, but it was underdone. And also it was wet. Steam. When you make a yakni palau, you got to have that balance of boiling and steaming. I think he forgot to do the steaming bit. So hence, there was a lot of moisture and it was like a, what we call, would call it a khichri, where everything sticks together rather than a palau. We want to sell food which is unpretentious, where the food is wholesome and have generous portion size. And authentic. Yes. It's right. supposed to be marketplace yes. Indian cooking. And right. korma is one of the basic sauces. It's one of the basic mother Indian sauce that a chef has to get it right. Alex is not just on a search to find the perfect head chef. 
she's also using her vast hospitality experience to help Jay and Uttam bring authentic Indian to the high street. I want to give a choice to the British customers as to what they like, you know. At the end of the day, it's their choice. But an authentic Indian curry is quite different to what they have been used to over the years. Our vision for the future is to have portlies all around the country which serves authentic, everyday, casual Indian food. But growing a business isn't that straightforward. The restaurant chain industry has grown at an astronomical rate over the last 30 years, generating over 40 billion pounds every year. But the harsh reality is that many new restaurants fail in the first 12 months. If there's a chain that you would aspire to be, who would it be? Probably Oaxaca in terms of the food, in terms of the setting, in terms of the ambience. It's very informal, casual, vibrant, but the food really has the panache. The Mexican chain was the brainchild of chef Tomasina Myers. Like Jay and Uttam, she saw a gap in the UK market and eight years ago opened her first restaurant in London. No one was really doing Mexican street food. No one, no one knew about Mexican food. So what we're doing was genuinely different. It took us a year to find a name, find the right designers who could work with us and be creative with us, find the right architects who could make this kind of street food marketing feel in that first restaurant. Due to popularity, it wasn't long before Tomasina opened another restaurant. It was incredibly challenging opening the second site, because at that point I had to step out of the kitchen, stop becoming a chef and become like the other side, the management side. So that was really difficult. The chain has grown because it has applied simple rules to all its sites. Get to know who your clientele are and, and carve out, you know, really almost a different business in, in every place you go. Like Tomasina, Alex thinks Jay and Utam need to establish some basic principles before their business can grow. To get brand awareness, you don't just need the food to be right. We're talking about a very sophisticated clientele these days who have we vote with their wallets, mm -hmm. and they vote by choosing nice environments as well as delicious That's food. Right, yeah. We have to be able to compete with every other amazingly highly designed, highly engineered chain that's Absolutely. on the high street. Today's diners want a stimulating restaurant environment. So every piece, surface and item should tie together and tell a story. I mean, all this kind of stuff is lovely. There's just not enough of it. These photos, for example, are they generic photos of marketplaces? These are pictures taken from different marketplaces, different scenes from all across India. Mm. It really gives a feeling of how chaotic, how unorganized the Indian marketplace is. Still there is a harmony, still there is a vibe. It's what the Indian lifestyle is all about. So small bits here and there just adds up, I think, to the whole ambience and experience. I would agree, but to make it effective, you need more, More of them, yeah, I understand. At yeah. the moment, yeah. I can see the intention, yes. but the execution isn't good enough. I, I mean, for example, you've got some nice products up on the bar, mm -hmm. but it's a token effort. A I want more. it to be like this on steroids. All right. This is a mood board that I had Zina put together for us. And uh, there are elements which I think are very important, like the elements of colour that I keep talking about. Yes. Obviously, I have... N none of the experience that you have about the Indian market food cuisine that you're supplying. But I challenge you mm -hmm. to come up with Indian marketplace solutions for everything that we need to do here. If you'd be interested mm -hmm. in having my designer come in right. and talk to you about colours. I think that expert advice would really be helpful for us. Improvements are all part of Jay and Atam's plan to make this restaurant a high street favourite. But first, they need to hire the right head chef. Can you finish with this? There you go, boss. You can have that. It's midday, and it's time for the chef's formal interviews. It's a chance for the chefs to convince us of their passion for this particular job. Ultimately, you want that perfect match. You want a job that suits a chef, and you want a chef who really wants that job. First up is Kuldi. Hi, guys. Hi. Michael Deep. Best of luck, mate. Despite being the most experienced, his first dish disappointed. Please Welcome, sit down, Kuldeep. Can his impressive CV help sway opinion? 
started off from a very low level and you have gradually come to a quite a decent position in your life which shows great commitment towards cooking. That's what we are looking for. Thank you. In a scale of 1 to 10, where do you rate yourself as a head chef? 10. So there is no room for improvement? There is, there is always room for improvement. Okay. I'm looking for a new challenge mm -hmm. where I can showcase my talent. Jay and Rutam have a passion for growing this business. They're looking for someone to work very much within their ethos and also help them develop and take it further. Is that something you can see yourself doing? Yes, yeah, sounds interesting. So you think you're competent and comfortable with all these aspects of uh, being a head chef and sort of, sort of spending so many plates at the same time? Yes, I am. Why do you think that they should give you the job? Well, I don't want to convince you guys. I want to perform it. Okay, good. Okay. That's Brilliant. a good answer. All the best. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank very you. much. Hey, bud. All right? Yeah, it's All right. good. It's good, man. How did you get on? It's very good, very good. Very good, yeah? Yeah. Well, good man. Well done. Thank you. I wanted him to be more kind of overt. It was like getting blood out of a stone trying yeah. to get him to talk. Well, whatever they ask me, I give them good answer. Yeah, I'm happy. There is a slight difference between a good chef who knows how to cook <laughs> and a head chef who so can lead a team. There's a big difference. There's a uh, big difference. Yeah. And, and he couldn't do justice with the interview. Clearly, a lot rests now on his signature dish. Yes. Let's look forward to it. Yes, I agree. Next is executive chef Stuart. Hi, guys. Best See of you later. Luck, yeah. Thank you. Bye, mate. He's passionate about Indian food, but not worked in an Indian kitchen. Will his extensive managerial skills oh. be his strength? Please. Thank you very much. You have no experience whatsoever in Indian Absolutely. cuisine. Yeah. And what makes you think that I would hire you? Because I'm different. I've got a business head. I understand cooking. I happen to believe my palate is very good. Right. And how long do you think you would be taking to get used to Indian cooking? I would uh, immerse myself in it, really. Anything that I've done previously, working with uh, in any other cuisines, I immerse myself in it and I find, you know, what's the best thing, what's the best way, and get all the great information from people, and that's how I would do it. And obviously, you have an enormous amount of experience in um, mm -hmm. new product development, yep. in ensuring consistency throughout yes. varied sites. Yes. And so that is a very appealing aspect to your CV. Thank you. You're talking about expanding to two or three sites, you know, then you've got a fantastic opportunity to to increase your buying power. Mm -hmm. So you're not buying from selected suppliers, you're buying together. You know, that's how you get consistency. Your customer comes in on a Friday, has a, let's say, a chicken korma. He wants that same chicken korma on a Saturday and a Sunday. You don't want, you know, three different chefs saying, oh, I like a little bit of this, oh, I like a little bit of that. That's, that's not how we play the game. Yeah, very true. Okay. I think they were more impressed with my interview than my korma. So, yeah, that was, that was, that was a positive. So what do we think? Mostly in the last 10, 12 years, he's spent his time in pubs. That's what my feeling, my fear about him is. How are you, Steve? Yeah, good. Good. That's that bit out of the way. That's good. I think I'm impressed. That's I'm forever being told I can talk too much, so uh, I use that skill and talk too much. So, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Comparing him with Kuldeep, it's like, you know, if I have Chalk the... and cheese. Yes. <laughs> if I have the cool deep sides of experience and towards the sides of the uh, um, admin side, I mean, I, I get the perfect head chef. There's from, no picking um, and choosing, darling. <laughs> I'm afraid you have to take the whole man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last but not least is Arbinder. Best of luck, buddy. Take care. He would like to return to cooking Indian food, but can the sous chef step up to the plate? Hi, Hi. Arbinder, please. Hi. Thank you. Hello, Arbinder. Hi. Hi. You mentioned that uh, you have a love affair with Indian food, yeah. uh, but obviously bulk of your experience is in continental European yeah, food. Yeah. Yeah. still have the passion for the Indian food, but I really wanted to incorporate a lot of uh, modern techniques into the Indian food, but keeping the authenticity of the Indian food as it is. Mm -hmm. The thing with the skill is that once you've got the skill in your hand, you're never going to forget it. 
the kind of calm and um, controlled and very reliable pair of hands is fantastic in a number two. But in a head chef, one needs to feel the fire in the belly. I'd like you to say something to convince me of that, if uh, you see what I mean. Like, my personality is not at uh, snapping at the people. My yep. personality is not at shouting at the people in the kitchen. What makes your blood boil? Does anything make your blood boil? A little bit of customer side of it. Okay. You know, when the food is ready in the kitchen, they need to hold the table and all this, and that's, that's that a really, be really quite frustrating, isn't I, it? It's really frustrating for me. I really don't like it, so. You're not smiling. Me? <laughs> I'm always like this. <laughs> I'm all... Did it go well? Yeah. Sorry. Playing it cool, then. Eh? Hopefully, I will be able to convince them through my cooking, because that's the one thing that they need to look for. Someone who says that once you learn a skill, you never lose it. That's sort of an attitude you, you want from a person. You didn't feel like he was slightly lacking in personality? That's the personality that he has, but he is very diligent yes. and very committed to his work. And are you convinced by his desire to come back to Indian cooking? That's the only bit that's probably the ha question having mark. a big question mark. The stones have all been thrown up in the air, and uh, let's see how they fall. Good afternoon. Two tests complete, and the chefs have one last chance to impress. What we are expecting is a cooking signature dish from a head chef. Please remember that. We are expecting a lot from you guys. Get cooking. Thank you, chef. They have 90 minutes to cook their signature dish, and costings will be required. I would feel very uncomfortable with a head chef who I had to explain how to cost to because it should be an essential part of their working knowledge. The price of a whole main course here ranges from 13 to 20 pounds. Minus the VAT, the cost of the ingredients should be no more than one third of the selling price. Any more and the dish will run at a loss. My sword wet turn a bit baking and uh, my sauce is almost done. I'm going to finish it. Kuldeep's hoping his combination of pan-fried venison and salt-crust baked turnips with a traditional rice biryani will be enough to impress. I'm mixing classic and modern together. The, the way I'm cooking biryani is uh, like a classic way, and the way I'm cooking venison, modern way. Chef, I see something very different and very traditional and very classic. You hardly see this in UK. So you have got a, a puff pastry layer on top of the bowl. What's inside? Well, it's the, it's the venison biryani. This is the biryani, and you will bake the puff pastry in the oven. Yes. Fantastic. And then I'm going to serve it. Very good, Chef. Good. I'm longing to yes, try it. I love yeah. venison, so uh, you get a And he's tick. doing one of the old-time classic. The idea is you take the seal off, aromatics of venison and the biryani comes through and the roasted turnip also complements the whole experience. Do you like the sound of that? Yeah, it is quite exciting. I've never had a venison biryani before. Well, you've never had one. I've never had one, certainly. It's very traditional, it's very authentic. Whether he gets it right, whether the seasoning is right, whether the venison is cooked right is something that we would very much. He has provided absolutely no costing. Costing, yes. Yes, I mean, with a head chef, we definitely want that to I form. mean, I cannot understand how this has been something that has escaped his attention. And let me tell you, he has been pressed for them. It isn't as if it could have slipped his mind. That's really disappointing. Unlike Kuldeep, Stuart has provided detailed costings for his signature dish. In my current role, it's a bit of a running joke that, oh, here comes Stuart with his computer and his calculator and his weighing scales. Costing's very important, you know, it's, it's the bread and butter of the restaurant. However, Stuart still needs to prove his abilities in cooking Indian cuisine. He's preparing a chickpea curry to accompany his venison. Stuart. Hello. What uh, are you doing? What am I doing? Yes. Well, you'll be pleased to know I'm doing some venison. Oh, good. Two <coughs> venison. Venison too. water, yeah. Some water. I'm using a loin of venison here, so I've trimmed all the silver off that. And I've just rolled it up into some cling film so we get a nice, solid piece. I'm going to pan roast this off, and then when I've finished, I've got a little mixture of black cardamom and salt. I'm going to roll it in that, and then I'll slice it on the finished dish. 
just one word of advice. This is very, very powerful, very yes, strong, yes. very intense. So yes. use it very, very, very yes. Sparingly. No, no, no. It's just going to be in at the end. So you get that yes. flavour. Yeah. So you want that first flavour, the black cardamom, to come through. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a little root vegetable fritter that's going to be. So I'm going to okay. mix that a little bit of yoghurt. It's got lemon juice and salt in there already. I'm going to put a little bit of the yoghurt and then I'm going to bind it with the, with the gram, the it's chickpea flour. Like pakora, is it? Well, I didn't want to say it was like a pakora in case <laughs> you meant it's not a pakora, so right, okay. But yes, it's, it's, that's, it's, it's the idea. Yeah, that's it's, fine. it's the idea. Yeah, yeah, it's based on fine. a pakora, yeah. so you've got a lot of contrast of flavours and textures, and they're all going to bring and the colours. dish together. And colours, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Chef, have you cooked this dish before? Uh, a few times, yes. So you are pretty confident? Yes. Yes, Brilliant. very much so. I created the recipe so I would be able to, you know, slowly get through the recipe and not have to be running around doing too much. It's not too technical. It's, it's all about the flavours and the ingredients. With the steward's dish, one thing I'm, I really admire is that he's got his spicing right. If he's not gone for the overkill and if he's got just the spicing right, the venison properly cooked and with the fritters, it might be a, a real game changer. Arbinder's signature dish is an authentic South Indian recipe that will use banana leaves to cook his stone bass. The only why I'm using this fish is for is like it, it can take the strong flavours. So that's the only reason I'm using the stone bass. Hi. Hi. How are you? Tell us what you're making for us. Uh, I'm going to make a paste with a coriander, mint leaves, coconut. I'm just going to put on top of the fish that's skinned off, stone bass. It can take a very strong flavours, a lot of Indian spices, and I'm going to steam it on the banana leaf. Very nice. I'm serving it uh, with, with the squid. So these are the banana leaves that you would be using to wrap up your fish, is it? fish, yeah. So I'm going to make a traditional South Indian curry. It's called Mean Moili. Very nice. But you come from the north, so you are yeah. quite adept in making South Indian dishes also, because regional Indian food is quite yeah. different, so yeah, yeah, you're yeah. confident making a South Indian dish? Yeah, yeah very much, very yeah, much confident. Really. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm quite pleased. Sous chef Arbinder has provided the costings for his dish, but not a menu price. Alex is concerned this is down to inexperience. It would be perfectly possible on this occasion, given a menu, to find out the costs according to your uh, regular suppliers and then work out something. Someone applying for a head chef position and giving a limited food cost, not working out the VAT, that is something which disappoints. But having said so, that is one dish, at least on paper, I'm quite excited Me about. Me too. The whole menu today is quite exciting. I'm looking forward to every one of those dishes. Do you have any vinegar? Just some over there. Kuldeep is using his venison two ways. Traditionally, in his biryani. A little bit of garam masala. That's it. And pan fried in his more modern dish. He also uses turnips, which he bakes in a salt dough to maximize the flavor. I did bake my turnip in a class 20 minutes. It's steam inside. I'm going to peel it and make a little dice. Stuart's venison is being served with a chickpea curry. Well, we skin the chickpeas just to get rid of the horrible little outside bits. I learnt my lesson from this morning. They don't like bits in the sauces, and they're lovely and smooth, so that's what they'll get. Staying true to his southern Indian recipe, Arbinder cooks his stone bass in the banana leaves. I really want to show my skills of how you handle the fish, but I really want to keep the authenticity within that plate. The banana leaves hold in the moisture and flavour as the fish cooks in the oven. And Stuart can't resist tasting the competition. Yeah, ready. Best luck. Thank you. First to serve is Kuldeep. Thank you. That's my signature dish. Kuldeep serves pan-fried venison saddle with salt crust baked turnips, accompanied with a traditional venison biryani and a spiced bone marrow jus. He hasn't supplied costings or a menu price. May I be the first to say that to my eyes that looks absolutely beautiful. Very, very pleasing to, to your eyes, yes. 
थैंक यू Immediately the aroma of the biryani, the saffron, the mint, the brown onions, everything just coming through. I thought the biryani was excellent. It was really a standout dish. Darling, this Thank is you. a revelation to me. It's absolutely delicious. You haven't overdone it, okay. which is what I like about your biryani. And as for the venison, mm -hmm. I mean for me that is cooked to perfection and the turnip was I could have done with a lot more turnip that was really fantastic. It shows you the depth and the touch and the sort of uh, skill level that you have got. The only uh, lingering question I have is we didn't receive any costing. Kuldeep when when you're applying for a head chef position mm. you should have done your costing. Certainly we love the food but the costings need to be worked on is that a fair comment definitely yes thank you chef thank, thank you very you much very thank much. you very much thanks okay chef thank you guys go well yeah i think so okay <laughs> are they tough crowd mm, no no it's, it's okay he knows what he's cooking yes. which is which is Very to be sure given way. to him you know well in terms of his biryani i think is one of the best biryanis i've had but for him not to come up with costing was quite disappointing right well we live and learn yes <laughs> yeah i feel very happy because everybody love the food i think they're going to call him back for next interview it's nice sir oh, i hope it's a winning dish for you <laughs> thank you yeah. You like it? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Next up is Stuart. Hot. But just what I wanted, <clears throat> that flavour of yoghurt coming through, lightness and citrusy and fresh, just compared to the curry and the, the venison, it'll finish the dish off really well. Now, I'd like, you know, Alex and Jay to un to know that I have an understanding of where, what I'm doing, that I'm not just coming into this blind. Now that'll give them confidence and hope to, to, to get me further. Well done, man. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Hi, Hello. doll. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Stewart's dish is pan-fried venison loin sat on a chickpea curry with a black cardamom sauce and root vegetable fritters. It is finished with a wilted fennel, pomegranate and coriander salad with a combined ingredients total of £4.59 and a selling price of £15.50. Stewart's dish provides a good profitable return. Well, as far as I'm concerned, your vegetable fritters are absolutely delicious. I mean, yeah. that's the first comment I've got to make. I love a little bit of yogurt in the middle as yes, well. Yes, I, I could Real feel creaminess that. as well. I was just about to ask you yeah. that. Venison is mm. perfectly done, not overspiced. Chana masala complementing your venison. Yep. Perfect execution of our signature dish. What we wanted to express yourself and you have done it in a leaps and bounds. Thank you very much. And we have to congratulate you too because you got your costings <laughs> all right. Yep, we were all very impressed we by care. that. You really have redeemed yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yay! Thank you very Good. much. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. so Thank you. much. Thank you. That went really well. Thank goodness. I redeemed myself, quote unquote. I personally felt that the pakoras he made were absolutely out of the world. Good for him to try something so unique and something which was not easy. As a dish, I think he has nailed it. It had all the elements that you would have had wanted a head chef to create. And he knows his uh, costing, he knows his margin. So he's a complete package. What he has done is show us that he's a chef worth his salt. Absolutely. absolutely. Could have been spicier, but I thought it was going to be too spicy. That's good. Well, this morning, they didn't know me from anybody else, so I was just another chef coming in here to try and cook for them, but, you know, I knew in my heart what I'm capable of, how I work. They've seen, you know, the whole Stuart today. 
last to plate up is our binder. Uh, so I've got a squid over here, so it's all the tentacles of the squid. It's marinated in uh, red chili powder, lemon juice, ginger garlic paste. So I'm gonna coat it with the semolina and deep fry. The part of the squid, I'm gonna use it in sauce. I'm just gonna cut it very thinly, just cook it for just a one or two minutes so it doesn't go too tough. So fingers are crossed here. Good luck, chef. Thank you. Looks fantastic. Thank you, chef. What do you think about this? Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Very vibrant, fresh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Our binder serves steamed stone bass fillet, which has been cooked in banana leaves, with crispy squid and turmeric and ginger braised squid with a spinach and new potato terrine. The cost of the combined ingredients is £9.51. However, our binder has failed to provide a menu price. I'm slightly disappointed with the presentation. I mean, there's a very big piece of fish. The whole thing is quite flat. All right. Well, I may have been disappointed with the presentation, but I'm certainly not disappointed with the flavour. Your fish is very soft and tender. You've got a nice crust of marination going on, and every mouthful is of, of equal joy. Very well executed. I personally loved your squid and the fish and the moily sauce. Mm. Yes. Juice inside coming out, as in loved it. It's fantastic. But, but tell me something about your costing. Yeah. Why, why couldn't you add up your different elements of the cost and give us a final costing? Uh, it, what was wrong with that? Yeah, I know, it's very important. I will hope to imp uh, improve it and renew. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. My goodness gracious me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah went on very well. Uh, Flavour-wise, it was uh, as well as good, yeah. Okay, so please, yeah, people. Yeah. Love to. <laughs> oh. I was I was disappointed to see the presentation, not with a, to the standard that he should have had done it. But the dish is something I love eating. I could have had finished it on my own. The squid's lovely. Very nice, well chef. Well done. Thank you. Presentation side, I've uh, I've made uh, myself a little bit down, but uh, the flavour-wise, it was it was absolutely fine. Give me your recipe. Then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I am partial towards fish, so I'm trying to keep it as subjective as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the dish really delivered well, especially the sauce and the marination and the sort of the selection of the fish. But then I, I was disappointed that he could have done worked a little more on the costing side of it. But otherwise, I think I think he did very well. The chefs have given their all. It's now a waiting game. The amount of energy and effort they have put in in their signature dishes, it really makes me extremely proud that, you know, these three are equally deserving. Actually, we have nice things to say about all of them now. Yes. Um, and I think that's a good position to be in. I love to come back. I love to come back and cook with them again. You know, two good chefs here working with me, so yeah, whoever wins will be well deserved. To be a head chef is, is a step up uh, in uh, is going to be in my career. I can do the food which I love. Hopefully, uh, it should work for me. This is an immensely important decision from them. It is probably their most important hiring decision to date, and probably in the near future. And they can't afford to make a mistake. It's the moment of truth. Chefs, thank you so much for today. We have really enjoyed tasting your food and speaking to each and every one of you. I'm very glad the decision isn't mine to make. It is Jay and Otam, so I'm going to hand over to them. Thank you for providing such a treat to all of us. Uh, morning was a bit of a disaster for some of you. 
each had shown some unique skills. Uh, Chef Kuldeep, your signature dish was out of the world. You showed your skill level. You showed that, you know, the years that you have put into the kitchen. Chef Arvinda, with your korma, very good. The mouthfeel was there, the richness was there, but your lack of knowledge or the sort of the interest in terms of the cost, cost element is letting you down. Uh, Chef Stuart, in the morning, for whatever reason, the food that came out was not up to the mark. In terms of the signature dish, I think that's one of the best that I've tasted. <laughs> and also, in terms of the costing, you have really done a proper job. That's what we want the head chef to understand the other side of the business. So yeah, we had to really think hard and uh, come to a decision. And winner for today's heat is... Abrinda you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 All the best, man. Thank you. Eh? Thank you. Good man. Thank you. Good man. Well done. Well done. Thank you so much. I don't have any regret. I'm very happy. I'm proud of myself. I did well. Yeah, I think the right man won. I was up against two, uh, two outstanding Indian chefs, and I came here to hold my own, and I think I did. It was important to see someone who's going to be fitting into our environment, and what Abrinder offered us that flexibility that urge to learn, that was the key factor. I'm thrilled that Arvinda has gone through. I'm very excited about what he's going to come up with next. I think Arvinda is a worthy candidate for the position of head chef at this restaurant.